talks here at the Martin Siegel Theater Center, the Graduate Center, CUNY of the City University of New York, we are Manhattan. And it's a Memorial Day Monday, a Memorial Day and Memorial Day weekends are um, important markers in the life uh, of everyone in America, but also of a city. It is when you know people pack their cars and if they have any and go out uh, for the first time to the houses, the country houses, there's some kind of a early hints of of summer uh, in the air and uh, that the cold, uh, especially harsh winter months that we often do experience in New York are behind us and that better things are coming. Um, this of course is a Memorial Day weekend to remember. And uh, next, you know, to all the wars that have fought of life's lost, uh, lots of them, many, many for fight for freedom and for liberty and for uh, making the world a better place. And this is a weekend will be remembered. Most probably is the Corona and Memorial Day, Day weekend. Um, it's uh, still a devastating uh, uh, state here in the United States, close to 100,000 deaths, official ones. So we don't really know how the real numbers are, most probably double or two or three times more. Nobody will really know. And, um, and we don't really know what, what will happen. Uh, outlooks in Latin America are grim, Brazil and other. Argentina, they're just getting to hit. There's so many connections to the city here in New York where four or five million people take a subway every day. And, and it's a busy town where people get together and enjoy company, community, talking, singing, acting. It's a town of theater and life and everything is closed. The restaurants are closed. I think the rest of America perhaps is opening up a little bit more. We will see what it will bring and the dangerous and um, but um, uh, especially for us who are uh, working in the field of theater and performance and the audiences who are listening to us, people who go to theater, it is uh, uh, something has been taken away. We are confined to our small spaces. The world has gotten smaller, smaller in a sense that we can talk to Chris now today in Belgium or to Hong Kong or South Africa, but also smaller where we are. And, um, and we all are closer to ourselves, our existence. We are forced to ask existential questions. What is life about? What does it mean? What does art comes in? Uh, what is uh, what we really want to do? If there ever was something we wanted to do or think about, now is the time. If not now, never uh, will be uh, something take place. And perhaps it is a time to think about changing. Forms that do not work uh, have to go, new forms whether it's in government, whether it's in, uh, <clears throat> in, um, in community or whether it's in the arts, you know, if they should we need change so as it becomes obviously clear, things are not working. Uh, Richard Schechner quoted a friend of his who said it's a nuclear reactor exploding. Uh, the top has been blown off and we look at it. Everything is exposed, it's closer. And um, we need in these times to hear from artists, um, great artists, especially artists uh, who have been closer, of course, to the search for meaning of life, to so their experience, their research, we are participating you know, in what it really means to be alive when a stone is a stone and black is black, when love is love and death is death. And, um, and artists have been on the right side of history, the right side of justice, but also always had a deeper insight and often anticipate a future. One of those great artists, uh, contemporary artists uh, on the, this uh, planet Earth um, that's flying through the universe. As someone said in our Siegel talks, those 10 meters above us and the 10 meter below us, these 20 meters that really, really matter. And in those 20 meters, he has been someone who really uh, was asking uh, questions about theater performance and uh, is looking for new forms and has found new forms. Uh, Chris Verdonk, uh, Welcome first, uh, thank, thank you, you for, for, for joining us. He's a, a visual artist. He studied also uh, architecture and uh, was close to theater and uh, he uh, operates out of Brussels. He has a company, the Two Dogs Company in, in Brussels. And I hope we will get a little insight in his work. Many of you might know about him, others might not know about him yet. Um, he's supposed to come to Skirball at a certain point in NYU. Um, so uh, Chris uh, is a permanent feature on many, many festivals in Europe in all the interesting places. So uh, Chris, I apologize for, for, for speaking too long and too much. The entire hour is really about listening, though. This will be the most I will be talking, I hope. 
And um, first of all, really, really welcome. Thank you for taking time out and for talking to us. Where are you now and what time is it? It's now Brussels, around six, um, sun is shining. Uh, this is a bit like the, the weather report of David Lynch. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, um, there's a bit of wind, um, and if not, uh, there's a bit of a disease going on. If not, all we are all fine, I guess. Where are you in Brussels? In what neighborhood? And where's your company located and all that? Uh, my company itself was located in the in the Kai Theater. Uh, that's one of the main theaters in, in, in Brussels. There we have a residency. So you have an office space and your own rehearsal space there, or? Yeah, and next to it, I have a small rehearsal space. Well, small, it's, it is uh, 100 square meters just to, uh, to rehearse. And then, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's quite something. The, the, the rent here is still affordable somehow. So. Uh, so I've been lucky enough to have a, an atelier where we construct all the installations and I can do my, uh, my work. Um, and we are more or less five in the company uh, for the moment. Yeah, so the theater gives you an office, an established theater says, we like you guys, here's an office, you work, you pay rent or um, it's... Uh, yeah, all rent, you use their phone and, and that kind of thing. Oh, well, fantastic. Um, so... Um, so tell us, how is it in Brussels at the moment, in Belgium, um, how is the corona situation? Um, in Belgium, well, we, um, it's, well, I think, first of all, politically, they did, first of all, something really interesting is that the virologist, uh, Mark van Ranst, so he's kind of the, the, the main uh, uh, responsible, and they gave most of the power just to him. They said, "What do we have to do now?" And we'll we'll follow. So I thought that was a that was a very interesting and courageous uh, uh, thing that the environment that the government did, um, and they really followed. Them. Uh, there was not so many discussions about what to do and what not to do. Um, um, but we had no re real government, like Belgium never has a government. Uh, we have nine governments really, but that's the whole the whole complexity. Different regions, yeah. And regions and the whole the whole uh, explosion of, of governments, but um, so this, this this idea to keep uh, to give the doctor a kind of carte blanche that he could he could decide almost everything was was quite something, and also something that it was it still goes on now is that every morning at eleven o'clock, uh, three doctors, three um, uh, virologists, they announce all the figures and they do it very, very precise. They try to name what is going on, how many, how many casualties, how many disease, these kind of, they give a, a it's, it's not political. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's a, uh, what we forget sometimes is that of course, there is a policy behind a medical system. The European medical system is to save everybody. So yes. it has a policy, there, ha there is a politic idea behind it. Um, and that means saving people no matter what. So this is a, it's a, it's a we didn't do, um, so, and that's what uh, Van Rans did. Um, we were not in complete lockdown. We did it a bit the Belgian way, or he did it a bit the Belgian way, more responsible for yourself. Um, but I guess uh, we are, we, we, I think we avoided the, the big catastrophe. We didn't have Italy or, or these kind of enormous explosions of, of uh, casualties. Um, a strange thing here is that they count um, every, every casualty that is suspected. Hmm. The corona related, they count with, uh, with the casualties. And that makes that we are sometimes top of the world uh, not, we didn't miss nobody, uh, mm -hmm. even somebody who just died from a normal disease. It's, so that means that sometimes the figures go up, but I have the impression that it's in the frame of being reasonable that we didn't have this enormous wave of, of, uh, of uh, 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 problems. 
Incredible. So a virologist is acting as a president for a country that has no central government, seems to be working. Uh, the approach is the opposite of Russia, or perhaps what we also suspect a bit in the US. Instead of undercounting, it is overcounting. And just, uh, I mean, what are the numbers, more or less? Ooh, I didn't. Uh, I think there are 8,000 casualties, but I'm not very sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I didn't. Yeah. Put a, with a lot of figures by itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, it's um, today. I think twenty-seven uh, people went into hospital today. Yeah. So I don't it's even know we have casualties. Uh, something. Yeah. Something seems to be working. Has anybody has ever doubted why politics are of importance? Why it's significant that the form of government you had and the forms they choose to 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 do, as you would say, try to fight for the life of everybody. It makes a difference. It's a gigantic. We heard that from all our talks um, around the world. Thomas Oster, Oberender from uh, Belgium, uh, from, from Berlin yesterday, uh, the day before, also talked about that. He said, I'm kind of happy that we are this participatory democracy in Germany. We didn't feel it was imposed. There were discussions. Things are working. Like we all are used to be so skeptical of governments. He also coming from the East, one who demonstrators who helped to make the opening of the wall happen in 89, also a writer curator. And, um, and meanwhile, here uh, in America, I think the numbers of 15% uh, trust in government before even coronavirus. Uh, it's uh, shocking. We have, you know, 35 million people out of work. Also, only the official number, not the numbers, you know, shadow numbers within four weeks. It's a shock uh, in the system. Uh, a car has come to a halt. It's flipping over and we are still in the air, I think. And we don't know where we land maybe on four wheels and it might go, but we, we don't know. Um, Chris, you were such a, a, a significant uh, um, worker in the field of the contemporary theater, your uh, contributions of, uh, towards use of language, images on stage, uh, the mechanicals, the idea of uh, the presence and the absence, object, and something. You, you have such, um, such, uh, made such a contribution um, already, and your work is still evolving, being, coming up. As an artist in that room where you are in now in Brussels, I looked at the calendar at your the Two Dogs Company. It, it was super full in February, and there's something in September. Um, so, how do you experience this? I think. One of the, how do I really experience it is, I think um, Mr. Nick Cave wrote a beautiful uh, letter and he said, well, the first days we, with the bad seats, with his group that is around him, um, they said, oh yeah, we're gonna make a quarantine CD and we're finally going to make this, uh, the soundtrack for that movie and we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. That, that was the, the first couple of weeks. And then they said, well, let's do nothing. Um, and they didn't do anything. They're just waiting somehow in, in hibernation. That's the, the feel. So, it, so the, um, the, the, I did do some things. I had my goals in the beginning. I said, okay, I'm going to, I didn't do classic gallery work. And this is the time to, to think about things I've never taught. Um, it's, a, it's also Jean-Paul van Bendigem, a quite important philosopher here in Belgium, he said, well, this is the time to think thoughts you never dared to think because you have time to think them. There's no pressure. Uh, there's a little disadvantage of that uh, idea is that you can go too far and go mad. But not, if, you're not go, if you don't go mad, uh, this is the time to think things that you never thought. There's no uh, reason not to think things. So this is more or less the, so I'm, I'm also, um, the, everything just slowed dime, uh, down incredibly. Um, I had a, a friend, we, we Skyped every day and the first thing was, what did you do today? And it was quite fun because, well, I got up, I had some coffee and then, um, I, so nothing happened those days, days and days of, of sheer nothingness. And it's in, in interesting how a body reacts to that, how a mind reacts to that, everything slows down. down. 
Um, but but about all the all the shows being cancelled, and I think one there's something new. The, the, so everything is insecure, as you just said. They're, they're, it's like a car, but we don't. But the the main thing, what is really new, is that there's no no security whatsoever, no certainty about next months. But nobody knows. Not politicians. Not nobody. Um, and I think that's uh, that's something we really don't know. The idea that we can't plan anything. Um, and this is even if I talk now with with my technicians or we try to plan things that are I'm just gonna stop my mail my apologies um, there we are um, you still hear me yes yeah perfect um, um, so the we are um, in full insecurity we, we try to plan things but we know that, oh, so full conversations then go, oh, we might play there and that we might do. And Chris, do you have an idea what we will do then? And yes, I've got an idea. Shall we do it? Well, maybe yes, maybe not. So this is for me, one of the most striking new feelings that, uh, that, is, that is coming towards us. There's no way of, of, of projecting ourselves in the future of, understanding for the moment, trying to even understand the consequences, uh, economically, socially, politically, we, can, we can't see anything, it's just black. It's even more than ever the, the angel um, of history of Mr. Uh, Walter Benjamin, where we, where we really are in unsec unsecure times. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, I'm, I'm not in the position to, for, to uh, 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 project anything or try to read what will go, what will, will go on because, because I, I really feel like the, the, the fish in the water talking about water and that's always a, a very difficult one. I read the newspapers and I think, well, all these analysis, they're nice, but tomorrow they can say something else because we don't know, but it's the we don't know thing that is for me the most impressive uh, new feeling. This is, you can't, will, what will you do next year? Will you open, will you not? It's so strange to have a school, for example, and you don't know how to organize lessons. It's just a, so this, um, I think this is, and, and probably the work that is produced at the moment will, if we look back to those works that are created now, they tell about confinement and they tell about things. But for the moment, it's so difficult to read. It's impossible to read what is going on. And this impossibility is, um, is striking. Yep. Yeah, that's um, kind of... Hmm? So I think that's the, that's the, that's actually my, the, 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 if you're on the, if you, when we would compare it to the beginning of the Second World War, you have intellectuals all around Europe and artists and, and politicians and some surprising ones, they stayed and said, oh no, actually there's nothing, there's nothing really horrible going on. And other ones just, uh, f uh, flee and um, and made it. So so I feel in the, in the same kind of impossibility to read the world. Uh, it's of course impossible. I've never been able to read the world, but now it's it's almost a total blank. You can I can only see what is going on and almost write it down as a documentary, mm -hmm. much more than than um, giving form or or giving an interpretation of what is going on, uh, except for the insecurity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, you, you, you described that well, that kind of warm blanket of civilization, of Western civilization, the security is a bit put away and the ice of civilization is a bit cracking. I mean, we still walk on it, and, uh, but 
for the first time, perhaps, at least in my lifetime also, we have that feeling that uh, we do not know what might happen, what might happen might not be good at all. Um, colleagues we talk to, you know, whether they are from Palestine, Lebanon, um, Africa, Burkina Faso, or South Africa, they said, you know, you guys now have a slice of our daily existence. Uh, 400,000 people die of malaria each year, yeah, don't even have the money for vaccinations. Or Hong Kong colleagues said, uh, you know, the real fight is working, coming towards us. And we just learned uh, how that will be. So the corona is not the real thing, the corona fight on the Ukraine with their four and six years. On the other hand, um, we are experiencing this moment um, and uh, we are struggling to make sense. Um, you said it is a time to think about what you have never thought about. What, what do you think about you haven't thought about? Oh. That's a dangerous uh, question. No, it's a, it's it's exercises. It's, 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 um, it's the same thing as the 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 the, the book that is too too large to read, but you always push. Say like, oh no, I'm not going to do just two thousand pages, um, and suddenly you have time to to sit down and and um, and think about them, um, and it's. It's um, uh, some installations I made uh, a year ago. I made made a piece called Detail. Um, and Detail is a 650 uh, kilos heavy rock that is suspended, uh, the little engine that is turning the, the, the rock around. And the engine is connected to a, the electro motor is connected to a, a solar panel. Um, and when the sun shines, it, it goes fast. When there's a cloud, it stops for a second, et cetera, et cetera. It's, very, uh, it's very in very close relationship with the, the sun mm -hmm. or the elements outside. Um, at night, it stops. And in the morning, it starts to turn together with all the rest. Um, so that, that was this piece detail. And then um, I never had time to really think about what this installation and the flaws and how it what it what it means and and try to continue uh, reflecting on 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 one part of an installation and, and um, uh, solar panels the so and, um, this the, the basics of of this installation was actually of detail was to use energy. Um, as a organic form and not as a stable form. Uh, what I mean with that is all our machines, everything is made on, on, a, on a stable uh, energy basis. Mm -hmm. You have, a, you have a, a, a solar panel or wind or even, even um, uh, radioactivity, why not? Uh, but then it goes into a condensator or a battery and then stable uh, energy comes out. And mm -hmm. this is what machines love. All our machines are made on this kind of stable uh, feeding of electricity. Uh, but what if we take it as a, an organic form and use it as, um, um, as an insecure form also? Uh, it would be the same as, as the same, it would be the same as going to the to the supermarket and you don't find bananas because there are no bananas. They just didn't arrive. And it's this kind of insecurity or this, this taking it as it is um, that, that, I, that I try to work on and try to understand uh, what it is. What is it? This is the, 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 the question. I remember um, I was in Cuba, did I, I was, a, with a group, um, um, salsa, whatever. I can't play music, but I was with them, whatever. Um, and when, the, and when the, the electricity drops out, well, they just have to, had to wait. Mm -hmm. And this is this kind of very strange waiting time. And, and we, we are in exactly the same position. There is this uh, in void, there's the, the waiting um, and being uncertain about the outcome. And I think that will be the new daily um, 
uh, yeah, this is this is our new the new thing, and we have to deal with it. Um, and about well, yeah, the whole of Africa, Congo, Rwanda. In some places, they didn't. They, AIDS didn't exist because, well, people got sick. And if you're 30, you die. So you didn't really have the time to die. It was just another disease. And indeed now uh, we, we are, uh, we're in this new thing um, and we have to deal with it. And the question is, what will it produce, this insecurity? More, more extre extremism, or more social behavior and, and um, but the outcome is uncertain. Uh, it can go both ways for, it could go, it could go for, the, for the good, could go for the bad. Um, this is, yeah, it's impossible, for me it's impossible to predict. Um, I, I, I really can't say now, what it's that's our specialty, I think, as human beings. We do things, or there are things that come that fall upon us, and and actually it's impossible to announce how what the outcome will come, how it will, how will we react. If but if somebody shoots at you, will you shoot back or will you hide? Well, it's only the moment itself that will then you will see what you did, but during the point itself, it's something else that takes over. Mm -hmm. And that's the feel I have. Um, I'm, I'm very afraid, of course, that, that, that we will have the wrong reaction. Knowing human beings a little bit, we will uh, have some wrong reactions. Um, uh, but, it, but it might be good for us. That's the feel. Mm -hmm. the, the impossibility. Um, uh, and, and of course, I, I have a lot, I, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I have so, uh, a substantial support of the, the government. Um, so there's still bread on the table. Um, and again, already there, I have to admit that for a lot of people, I'm telling complete nonsense now. People, there's so many uh, workers that go to work every day with the risk, um, or lots and lots of artists who really fundamentally have no money anymore. So I can also only tell this nonsense I just told to have time to think, uh, because there is a salary at the end of the month. Um, uh, but if not, that would be if if money would be an everyday issue, you don't have time to think what you would love to think. So there again, it comes, it, it becomes immediately very, very personal and the situation I'm in at the moment, uh, but I, I, I wouldn't have the pretension whatsoever to, to um, project this on, on so many other people. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know what I had if I if really going to work outside every day in the supermarket. That would be um, that would be something completely different experience of what we were what we are uh, experiencing right now. Yeah, <clears throat> and um, I think once you said that. Um, Planet Earth already is a Bosch-like hell. It's something isn't working, isn't right. Um, what do you experience now? Do you see a strong connection to what you want to communicate, the meaning you create for your theater work or what you want to happen in the heads of the audiences? Well, I can't say I told you so, this is stupid. But I... please do so, yeah, say it. But... It's no, it's well, yes, of course, apocalypse. Uh, I don't believe in the apocalypse at all, let me be, be very sure. But ecological disaster, um, if you look at, at uh, my last piece, something out of nothing, 
was based on the angel of history of Walter Benjamin, mm -hmm. where, where if you could, uh, again, this, this example of, of uh, Jean-Paul van Bendigem, the, the philosopher, at one point, Christophe van Baerle, my, uh, uh, mm -hmm. my uh, dramaturg, who was also at the, at the CUNY for some time, he asked, uh, Mr. van Bendigem, he asked, well, now you're old enough and please tell us what is changing in the world from your position on as this kind of uh, big question. And Mr. Van Bendigem, he told something very beautiful. He said, well, um, it goes, it's the following idea that we don't really change, it's the landscape that changes. We manipulate the landscape while we're living by pollution, by doing good, by doing bad, it doesn't really matter. It does matter, but we don't know what we're doing. We have an idea, but we'll do it. We will fly. We will, we will, we want to do progress. We want to invent things. We will do it. That's the nature of humankind. We can't invent, we cannot invent nothing. We have to invent it. Um, and, but the consequences of what we do in this, in our lifetime now, the consequences are for our children and the generation after that. So we, we also inherited the world from our parents. So we're always, in, we're always in delay. We are doing something and the next generation will bear consequences. And that is by law. This is, this is something that is out of the idea of, it has nothing to do with hope or, or going good or going bad. That's just the law on, on, on how it is. We can see something learning is a difficult thing especially when it's generations but we are we are we in, we inherit the world that we're born in and we will manipulate it for our next um, um and if you look at well this is also it's what's where all environmentalists are having so many troubles on trying to predict something because actually damage done it is already done. It, it was done 10 years, 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. And now we just see consequences. But it's so extremely difficult to do something now that in two generations time, it will be better. And in this, in this time, in this uh, impossibility of, there's this Bosch kind of hell that you, we don't know what we're doing. Um, um, so I don't think Bashal has to do with, with horror and with, of course, there are all these pictures, but loads of, loads of uh, characters in these Bosch paintings are just bored. Um, they, 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 if you look at them well, they, 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 there's no hardcore sex going on. They all just look mm -hmm. at each other and they're just, um, so um, they just wait. It's, it's much more Godot than it's, that it's, so the, if, if you try to, if I, I tried always to look at what happened then years ago and try to see like uh, G.J. Ballard, I really love in that sense, the, 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 the British writer mm -hmm. um, who says he really tried to hit on the, on, the, on, the, on the tectonic plates of society. I can't, I'm not as bright as he was, but the, but trying to understand these big movements and big consequences, uh, and, and they will have big consequences, but trying to predict what will go on is actually just a matter of trying to understand fundamentally, and we can't, um, but as an artist, you can take the liberty to take an element and project it into the future. And I rather do that like Mr. Ballard on the future of the next second and not of the, of the 10 years, because I don't know. But the one of the next second that is very close and very social politically uh, uh, feelable, that it is, is uh, so it's, it's, it's interesting now to, to see also all these countries said we weren't prepared. Well, no, of course you were not prepared, but it's almost impossible to prepare because this time we needed respiration machines, but the next one will be maybe something else. 
So you can't prepare for all the, all the diseases coming up. You just can't. At one point, you just have to hope for the best while you're in this, in this upside down car, as you, as you said. Um, so, so the only thing we could really say is that we weren't prepared. Um, but will, if this goes down, if this, will we say, all right, from now on, we always have these masks ready. We forgot in 10 years time, we forgot that it happened and, and it will not happen. So, so we are just a very interesting specimen that is, that is uh, uh, I think it's much more the pretension of thinking we know, that's a, that's a problem. There I do, do and also um, not to, this pretension, this being very pretentious, I mean, to think we will solve it, uh, especially through machines and, and mechanics. And every invention has its black side. Um, the devastation of, of the electric car in Congo the, the, the produce of batteries is just horror. Um, but, but we said, or we are saying now that the electric car will save the world, but it's not. So, but suddenly we go in, suddenly we, we do it. And then we bear or not bear consequences. Um, and in this, my, my characters and my machines like to, like to point out that, that state of, of, of being. Um, um, and the consequences, the last piece we made or I made was a uh, text for nothing of Samuel Beckett. Um, full confinement, uh, a man sitting alone mm -hmm. um, in a sitting and waiting and thinking. Um, um, and that's the consequence. And it's quite strange to be in the same position as my, uh, as my characters in. Um, another question that I, that I think is much more interesting than I said so, because that's personally, I think it's a bit boring. The question is much more what to do, what to do next. Um, and there was a beautiful little interview with, with, on the BBC website um, uh, with Mr. De Niro and the question first politically, and we know his, his, uh, his state of mind politically, but then he said, um, and then the next question was, will there be films made about confinement, about quarantine? And he said, yeah, probably. But I don't know if that's interesting. I would love to play in them, but I don't know if one, somebody wants to see them. Um, so for me, a big question is now much more, not even talking about the medium we should use, because that's a big one, of course. Uh, but first of all, content. What do we want to see somebody in confinement now? Is that the thing that will, will comfort us? Is that the classic uh, idea of tragedy? So it, we'll see the horror, so we feel better? I'm not sure. And this is the, the, the main thing I'm, I'm, um, I'm trying to, as I am in my own situation now, um, or the situation that my characters are in, um, the question is much more, for me personally, what to do? What's the story to be told now? And this is, this is, um, is it, I personally, to just continue, I, I personally do not believe in, in, um, I have, no, I have a lot of problems with theater companies that go now making Zoom things. And it just feels, it makes me just feel very, very lonely um, because I'm in front alone and seeing people talk like I do every day now through this new device, uh, Zoom, Skype, it's kind of mobile phone thing, but 
uh, we don't know what this is still. Um, our, I feel our body's not being ready yet to, to read. Uh, you cannot read what I feel and as we would do in, in daily life because it's a, it's a transformed image. Um, and I'm not sure that it, it, this, is the, this is the way to go. Um, I, I miss much more the, the, the ritual that actually theater is. Getting together, having a drink, yes, seeing a show, but that's nearly not, not necessary. If it's interesting, okay. If it's not interesting, well, bad luck. Um, and then we eat or then we drink again and, and, um, and bathe in our own, in, a, in each other's sweat and, and, um, and flirt along. Um, the social weight of, of the ritual is I think the, the thing I, meet, I, I miss most and until now I don't see any medium yet to, um, that, can, that can kind of have a, has a proposition to, to solve it. Um, film and video, Netflix, the whole, this whole, these media are so well made for this machine. They know how it works. They know how to make our, uh, 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 make our, make ourselves cry, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're perfect. In it. But we, as a, as a, as people of performance, we don't know how to deal with it. We love too much sweat and dirty stuff. I think um, we love the ritual. Um, um, and so it's, it's, that's, this is my, my biggest, um, even, even I, I try to erase the actor lots of times, own the machines mm -hmm. on stage. I know. But the ritual state, but I can't make machines, machine theater and some put some machines in, in the theater that watch machines perform. The, the fun stage, the fun stage that we have to be in, that we have to see what they do. Um, the, the machine on, on, a, on a performance stage implies the absence of a, of a human being or in history times, the ghost, the mechanical ghost, and so death. And we love to see that, but we have to be present to see it. And this time the audience disappeared. Um, it, it feels like these, everybody did it already, uh, these apéro parties of Zoom and you get drunk um, and suddenly it's finished and there you are alone in your room drunk. A horrible feeling. Um, while the, the fun part is to be drunk and not feel it and to wiggle home and that's it more or less. Uh, it's such a, the confinement is a, is a very lonely thing. Um, and, and I think our ritual, uh, the ritual aspect of theater is, a, is the thing to, there, and, and I don't see any, any, um, any proposition or I can't uh, formulate a, pro a proposition at the moment because I can't, I can't get near to people. And I'm afraid that if we would be, I'm, I, we are gonna do the theater festival now. We are selected for the theater festival now in, in August with the Beckett piece. And we'll do it in a big hall for 900 people, but we allow 120 people in, something there. In Brussels? In Brussels, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but people will sit two, three chairs from each other looking to somebody talks about being confined. The idea of being alone in, in these seats uh, and being empty, that will be the biggest theatrical experience what this piece will produce. What is it to be alone on these, in this empty, empty, sad medium that is theater at that, at that very moment? Um, and all pieces that will that will be 
played now in front of an audience that is nearly there will all talk about probably the same thing. They will talk about, I don't know, what a love affair, but what you will feel is you're sitting, you're sitting alone watching this love affair going on. So I'm, um, maybe a proposition is, is public space, but, but it's the only environment where we can gather a bit safe somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. How will that really feel like with masks? I mean, we all like coffee houses because we can be in solitude, but we are in company, you know? So I think also in theater, we, we might go alone, but we are in company. This is being taken and uh, is that still then um, theater? I, I love what you said about the um, tectonic plates, you know, as a, perhaps as an idea for theater that they are under immense pressure and sometimes something cracks and an explosion happens and theater perhaps is in a way um, that second, that moment where something comes out for a moment of time in Earthquake and then you go back, but it shakes the world, you, you uh, see it differently. Um, yeah, you, you work with you, the machines uh, on stage who often destroy themselves. Uh, I remember that beautiful piece and the camera went down a skyscraper of someone who most probably jumped to death and we hear her thoughts. Um, your idea that uh, you wanted to have the audience hypnotize and sleep and dream in the audiences and bring their own pillows and uh, or people in water tanks uh, uh, not really able to breathe. Um, you have dealt perhaps more than contemporary theater makers I know with that apocalyptic uh, end of the world with uh, um, trying to make it visible and uh, make us reflect. Did that work? Uh, um, do, do you think audiences connected or did they understand the meaning you put in? I don't know about, I'm not there to, I don't, I personally am not there to, to, to get an audience to make them conscient about problems or that's not my it's, um, there's no more, I try to, well, there is a morale, et cetera, but, it, but I'm not very interested in it, nor that I think the world will end at all. Um, but I do think that by, by working on these pieces, for myself at least, to try to understand these tectonic plates and try to understand what confinement is and, um, and try to, uh, 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 try to understand how we will, how, what, the, what our, what our condition is. Um, if I read somewhere that there's a lot of um, uh, 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 people without jobs, and then it's on the same, in the same paper, I read that there's a robot that is now making walls that we don't need workers anymore that, that they mm -hmm. yeah in the same paper and I'm like well yeah um, um, it's, I don't have to imagine anything um, but there, there, was, there still was always an exercise of I, I, I have again I have the feeling that I'm now myself in in the jump or in this aquarium thing and it's it's this this um, um, it's actually a very boring place to be in. I would love to be much more the re being the one that reflects on or predicts this kind of future uh, uh, catastrophe coming up than being in the catastrophe because then it's it's even so so much about all my pieces to be here to breathe and to stand a bit and that's it and to see how how time passes and just to wait um, is a is a feeling that is is on stage very interesting but to be in is just a boring thing I want to go out and play uh, that's the that's the feel um, to wanting to go out and play to to see the ritual and to and to, to be in and, and um, 
so the again my my concern is is not what i what i made and uh, it's much more we're gonna play now this exit the sleeping piece we're gonna do it again yeah because confinement mice people are already separate from each other in the hall and i think that piece could be interesting although although very lonely um uh, uh but it's also a very comforting piece you sleep mm -hmm. a bit you doze off you wake up you doze off again and it's it's very very comforting there's no i tried to make theater that in that moment uh, or at least for exit there's no um uh, no tragedy going on there's no conflict uh, the only conflict is in your head sleeping yes or no but if not, it's a, it's, I really want to do a present for the audience, mm -hmm. something much more comforting than confronted. Um, and, I, and I think somehow that's also what, what is necessary, much more a, a, a comforting story than a, than a look what we did thing. This is, this is what I, what I experience uh, more mm -hmm. that, that, yeah, um, that was also the, well, when, when he, um, Milo Rao went to, to Syria, uh, the main question was, well, what do those people need? Um, that was for me, the big question when he was there, mm -hmm. do they need to see a piece about war? Yes or no? And maybe yes, maybe not. I can't. I can't say anything about it. Uh, and maybe for some people it worked. Maybe for some people not. But this time, as a maker, I'm struggling with the with the question: What would I love to see? And then the craze. I don't want it. I don't care what I would love to see. I just want to go to the bar and drink together with everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a. To tell something about insecurity, we feel it already. We're in. So this is the whole nut uh, I'm, I'm experiencing right. I'm experiencing right now. Yeah. Um, one little prediction I dare to make is that 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 on on time the world will get big again. Um, as flying starts to be problematic. Well, it was already problematic for the environment long time, but now it, it will get so expensive, maybe. Um, and so the world will not be a village anymore and everybody will not be connected in a global network because that's impossible. Uh, so we will local production and, and it's, it's for this moment, at this moment, New York didn't feel as far as ever. Because we can't, you can't come here and I can't go. Maybe yes now, but, but still. No. Um, so, and I think globally that will, uh, we have of course powers that will do everything to get that globalization back on, on track. And, and maybe we would love to go back to the rat race. I don't know. What we will we? I also feel that to be. Shall we not go back into the rat race and do it again? The craziness we did, uh, but maybe it's impossible. And then we, um, China or whatever country, will be extremely far. We go on holiday, in, holiday in our own country suddenly. Um, um, so, and I think that will be. I, I I might think that that will be one of the consequences that 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 it will um, shall we go to Australia for fun? No, we won't. And so Australia is far, and we will not be interested anymore in the news of Australia because we have no connection anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so this this local production with all consequences, instead of uh, the world as a village, an enormous world would be uh, would be something I think mm. uh, and therefore and I think we feel that already starts is is uh, 
local work and local consumption, local production is suddenly uh, an essence. Um, and that could become important and, and has enormous consequences. Mm -hmm. In a way, like, like cooking, we cook at home and it's all of a sudden it does taste good. Even you know, there might be that restaurant in Paris, New Orleans or LA that might have better food by why flying there, you know, and uh, to connect it, yeah. yeah. I mean, I also remember your work, uh, the projection work you did when you uh, traced the outlines of houses, um, built them in small cardboard boxes, you know, and put people in, actors or performer people or, or just people was, I remember sometimes slightly deformed big bodies with tattoos who were confined in that space. And then you projected it on the big houses. I know there were even some controversies, a naked body next to the cross of a church. But in the idea I saw the like, almost like Greek gods uh, from the uh, from the Pergamon Museum in, in Berlin, all of a sudden they were, but they were the people, they were us, they were people you can see on the, on the houses. And uh, we had a circus uh, performers also here. You said, you know, we just once did it one piece on stills. We wanted to do something for people who are in their windows. They can look out and see something different. You know, I think they, that idea you did was projection. Perhaps also that is a way to uh, create something uh, that, uh, that you foresaw something, you anticipated a future and uh, enlarging of that confinement. I like your idea of saying it's about waiting. Perhaps we have to give, give com comfort now, you know. Uh, the, the projections in the, on, on the houses, again, they're public space, is a different medium than, um, than this machine uh, medium. Um, and I think, and theaters, performers have a, a tradition of having an understanding of public space uh, to perform there, to project on, on, wind, uh, on, on buildings, etc. So there is certainly something to, to that's a medium we, we, we could do things in, yeah. Um, the waiting as it becomes also a thing on itself, as we all know now. Um, suddenly we bake our own bread uh, because we have time to do it. And if it's necessary to see the sourdough going up and down, well, let's do it. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't, it, it, a small world is also a world. Eh? Um, um, and with also a lot of, of uh, excitement and and um, and all the whole the whole spectrum of feelings is is, is also there. Um, the the projections with the with the tattooed bodies was in mid crisis, mid economical crisis in Athens, um, and yes, the, it it got got a little controversy, but it, I don't think it was very interesting. It, they stopped nudes. And I was like, well, this is Greece. How can you stop nudes? But the controversy was not very interesting. But I, I really wanted to um, uh, uh, do paintings for the city uh, and, and comfort people a little bit, uh, although they're quite, quite confrontive, I guess. I'm not sure. Um, so, so, but again, there, I think. Um, we could try to understand indeed, as you said, try to give form to waiting and, and try to understand it much better, um, uh, dealing with time and space in a complete different form. I remember a little poem of uh, Daniel Herms. Um, at one point he says, well, I have this balloon at home, which is halfly inflated, uh, not completely full. And I imagine it's a wooden ball and I push it up and then it goes slowly down, but I think it's wood. And I walk around a bit, I sit in my chair, I go to my desk. And just before that it hits the, it's the, the floor, I push it back up and I call it a, a time machine. So this is, uh, uh, I thought it was very, 
convenient or very, very uh, talking about the world at this very moment. Um, or just uh, Kafka saying that he saw somebody walking in the, in the streets and that's it. So this kind of stop of, of speed is, uh, is absolutely something that is, that's, that's there in the arts for a long time. But we told that story of slowness, at least I did, because everything is going so fast. So now I maybe have to talk about speed or something to see there's the there's once you're in it's difficult to to talk about the water you're in. Mm. Yeah, so this is this is uh, So for me, the big question is content wise and medium. What's the proposition we need now. How's the what's the, how to give this. What, what do we need? I, these, all these, uh, I saw some video captations of, of theater pieces like we all did as just a sad thing. It's a different medium. So yeah, this is a... Um, I know from, from the great book that uh, performance research brought out just um, uh, uh, this, uh, this, this spring, actually, we were supposed also to do a book launch um, at the Siegel Theatre, you couldn't come. Peter Eckersall put it together so beautifully, and it's I like so these kind of dark pages in between the divisions. And the, but the interviews are striking, and often you do refer also to um, Inuit culture. I know you travel to uh, Arctica. You, we, what are you looking for there? What, what is there? What, what interests you, or what do you find? Um, well, I'm, I'm reading now quite a lot of Val Plumwood, uh, eco-feminist, uh, died in the 80s, Australian. Um, and she takes, she, her big statement is, we are food. Uh, we are part of a cycle. Um, we get, have to really get our, our, ourselves out of the center. Um, um, and with, with all these indigenous, or I have to say non-European arts, I'm, I'm, I really like them a lot because first of all, the status of the object is different. The status of the arts are different. They have a social political uh, uh, ground. Um, we can't do anything with it, but I, I, I like to, I enjoy to, to see it. Um, and I love the, 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 the Inuit story. Well, it's not really a story. It's at one point, um, there was somebody who wanted to note down all their stories about how the, the, the planet started or how, how Earth had the beginning of, the, of, of, of life. What, what, how, how did it uh, grew or how did it start? And people, the Inuit people said, well, we don't know. We weren't there at the moment. What can we say? And then this, this Dutch uh, uh, writer, he said, yeah, but you have to have an imagination about it. And they thought for a long time. And then they said, yeah, maybe you have to talk with, with this priest. Uh, maybe he knows, but we don't know. We weren't there. And I think it's such a relief to finally somebody tells the truth about how life on earth started and what we are, how we started, how we, we don't know. And I think there's a re relief in um, Val Plumwood puts it that, that being part of the worms is a relief. It's, it's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's something we can, it helps us um, instead of, of being horrific. And so she, Val Plumwood was attacked by a crocodile. She was quite famous for that. She was attacked by a crocodile and he put it her, he pulled her underwater uh, three times and she survived. 
Uh, she had a, of course, a, a near death experience, um, but then she experienced it to be food, to be part of the cycle. Um, and I think that exercise, that exercise is, is that I, that's also something I can, can somehow read in these objects. Um, what objects do you mean? The, the indigenous objects, the, 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 the carvings. Names, yeah, uh, from North America to South, everybody except the Europeans, they just want to paint how rich they were and a bit of, of uh, religion. That was the only thing we wanted to paint <laughs> for centuries. If you look at the Met now, you come in and you have this beautiful oceanic art that is so filled with, with energy and, and beauty. And then the rest of everything we painted, this uh, king was painted at that point and look how beautiful, well painted it is. Mm. What an idea. Well, actually, the whole world was looking at European art, I think, like, what the hell are they doing? Why would you paint some, somebody so naturalistic? Um, these beautiful, the whole continent, African sculptures are just extremely beautiful because they, they had the technique of perfect, doing perfect sculptures, but they were not interested. Why would you? Um, and I, I Again, there, I, I, I think there's uh, um, hope or something. Hope is a phrase word. Um, yeah, some comfort. Um, and that's why I, I, I really like all these, these uh, um, for example, these Inuit stories. At one point, just another part of the story was that a human being feels that he's sitting on sand um, that's more or less it. It's pitch black, he can't see, and then he feels something in his hand and he doesn't know what to do with it, so he puts it in the ground. Um, so the, the story there, uh, that's how the story starts. Somebody in the dark who doesn't know what to do and puts something in, in the earth, and so it starts to grow. But it is an, an absolute, uh, there's no, there's no pretension of human being to control the environment, nor to, and of course, it's much more living with the elements than against them, or try to manipulate them. Um, and if we would, it would be so interesting now if the, if the COVID-19 would be the result of pollution, wouldn't that be interesting? And then the next question is, will we pollute less? And there we are again. So these, these uh, that's why I, I, I love the, the, the whole uh, indigenous uh, stories and, and arts. Um, because for centuries they were talking about abstract, uh, abstract forms and ritual and um, and not talking about about European um, uh, way of thinking. Well, also the the, the whole, whole different concept that we killed, of course, or as much as we could. Um, uh, yeah, this is this is what <laughs> what the indigenous arts they have got this beauty in them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that stones, in a way, do have a consciousness like your stone, who you are turning, quite a great idea in a theater to have a massive structure. I don't know how it holds up with the ceiling, but anyway, and it's, and it's turned by the samba that perhaps that stone has a conscious and we'll just look at what we look at, you know, yeah. and we have to, and this kind of idea of the minimalist, you know, the material of it, and uh, we are the ones who have to process and we watch ourselves processing instead of getting, you know, sugar candy things and entertainment and, uh, you know, saying everything is okay and it can go on. We think it's time to look at work that tells us, you know, something is very, very wrong and uh, you are not seeing reality. Yeah, this stone is a very special one because it's so big and so uh, it's dangerous for the building even. Yeah, how does that work? How many pounds does that or kilos of stone have? 
650 kilos hanging on one thread. Well, it's engineer wise, it's okay, uh, but don't hang it in the wrong building, then you will have a problem. Um, but it, this stone, it, it, it's so massive that it's also just turning and it turns uh, without being plugged in, in the, on the net. So it, it has its own policy and it doesn't really care about who sees it and who not indeed. Um, and Peter said something very, Peter Eckersill said something very nice about it. I thought it was very nice. He said, well, uh, less is more, but sometimes less is also just less. Um, and not to, not to say something bad, but to say that at one point you're just standing next to this stone and it, um, it says in which time it lives. It's, it defines time and it's not you that is defining, defining time. Um, and I, I like to be pushed in that position as I do very slow theater pieces, just to be pushed in this kind of time frame of what the hell am I doing? This is so boring. What's, and suddenly you think what's going in in, in yourself. Mm. Um, yeah, like, like that black snow falling down these ashes that slowly fills the stage and covers everything instead of the Beckett play where you see the face already outside of the of the uh, Berkeley you, you 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 show that process yeah um, and the inevitability of it it will happen and you can see it um, a good Japanese detective story is where always in the beginning you see the murderer uh, committing the crime and then it starts you know already who did it. And then there's this very long story about will the detective find the killer? Um, it's, I mean, just to be, this is what the future is. You will go under. And now we have to spend time uh, while you still have it. And the question is how you will, how we will spend time. Mm -hmm. um, and this is also what we are feeling this very, very moment. Mm. Also, always like that idea of, if I understood it right, also Christoph van Bale talked about it, the idea of the mono reading that you go to an author. I don't know, like maybe, I know you did work on Kafka and Beckett, and you guys try to read everything that was written, yeah. and then you let go of a text and you come up with an idea. Did, did I understand that right? Yes. We're doing Kafka again now. So tell us a little bit about this because it also has a different form, you know, and uh, and um, and it perhaps connected to the time during where we can read and do things. But then we also don't do karaoke theater, which we say you don't really do something what's been done before. You create even from that rich material. What more can you get if you have in Kafka's entire work? But then you still create something new. What is the what's your idea behind this? Well, first of all. I think I just need time to understand what's, what's being written down. Um, no, I think it's just wonderful to, first of all, you have to have a writer which is consistent of, which is, which is something where you have to be, and then, and then to, I think it's, it's a matter of, uh, of trying to egoless reading, trying to forget about what I think about a writer um, or have an opinion, uh, but just really uh, every week now we reread Kafka. And if there's something we don't understand, then trying to understand it. And, and no matter how, if it's, if it's reading the biography and you, of course, you make a wrong interpretation because you think he fell off his little blue bicycle and then he writes about blue later on by a matter of speaking um that would be so but suddenly you uh, you really have the feeling as maker that you um that you have a third person around the table the writer um and you can almost go in dialogue with with this person and that's such a i um 
I really like it um, for now. For example, I always tried to, if I read Kafka, I didn't really like the, the, the psychology uh, part of it. And now suddenly I say, all right, okay, let's go, let's read the letters to my father. Let's read it, let's do the psychoanalytic um, uh, research. Let's just do it and maybe we'll get something, maybe we don't get something. And after a while, after a year, and maybe it wouldn't, I will not even use it. Um, but, but after a while you, um, you're so drowned in, in, in the material that you, that you start to think um, like, the, like the writer. And I think that's the, that's the goal. Um, and so from then on, you could do with other material, you could try to do what they would have done. Um, um, I think, for example, now what we, sh a project, this is a call, uh, a project for where, uh, where Beckett stopped uh, with Quat and some other television plays mm -hmm. and his monologues with the, with the talking heads. Um, I think those ones, if we would go deeply down in the reasons why he did them, uh, we could, that would be a proposition to make Zoom pieces uh, because he was already dealing with a screen in a private environment. Mm -hmm. So I think if we mono read it enough that we, that we could do new propositions uh, with a structure, with a, with a, with a bright mind uh, helping us to invent completely new things that are maybe not even Beckettian, Beckettian anymore. Um, uh, for example, I read that why Beckett said that you just can't put a people in a theater space or a television, make their television play of it. He said, well, it's very simple. You are in a social environment in a big box with small little human beings doing things. Suddenly you are in a private space with a small box with small human beings. That's a completely different environment. You just can't mix them like that. So, so I think if we would, if we would uh, okay. work on, on television plays of Beckett, we could, I think there's a, there's a thing to it to, pre, to make Zoom pieces now. So that's the thing of the, the, the mono reading um, and taking time to, to, uh, to really uh, digest uh, the content. Yeah. The problem of it is that the writer is in a dangerous position because if you're with three, four, five people really going down on one writer and the writer isn't, uh, isn't is insecure sometimes, uh, you think like, what did this person write? Um, so it's, it's not always fun for the writer. If you work on a text, some texts of, uh, I don't know, um, and after a week, mono reading one little poem, you think, maybe it's not good enough. Good enough is a strange sentence to say now, but the material goes, uh, it, it gets thin, while others, they just grow per, per text you read, and they become monsters. Um, and then it becomes very interesting, of course. So the mono reading is fun. It's just slow digesting things. Oh, interesting. In a way, also somehow connected very much um, to the time uh, where we are. I mean, so often um, also in New York, you know, plays are written so fast, produced so fast, shown so fast, three to five shows. The next thing is in the moment doesn't exist. It's a vehicle for the future. And you said already in your thing, mono reading, slow down, let's take the time you read. But as an idea for theater maker, then you take it, but something new, you know, how would Beckett then, since you know now Beckett, if he had to do Zoom, what would he do? And, uh, and, um, and so, and perhaps, um, as Hadamullah said about Brecht, you know, using Brecht without criticizing, without modifying is treason. 
you haven't understood anything about Brecht if you do that. And, um, and I think this is, a, again, a, something in your work, you know, that foreshadowed or anticipated, as Hansia said about great art, it anticipates the future, makes us comfortable with it, understanding it. And uh, while we imagining it in the right way, we come to terms with it, and, but also get uh, warnings, you know, of things that, uh, yeah, that stone uh, can fall down. It's dangerous and it has uh, it's something. We, we, we don't understand it perhaps even on a, on a uh, conscious level and with great art perhaps we shouldn't understand. If we understand it, why even look at it? Why even understand it? And you could write it down on, a, on an article. So it's, I think these are just fantastic and uh, brilliant uh, things as a, as a final question or close to final. Well, did, are you changed? Are you different, Chris Verdonk, than two months ago? We'll tell you in a year. Um... I, th uh, I don't, I don't, this is the, so I, I'm, I feel that I try to understand what it means to be uncertain for the next month. What, how, how is it to think about, how is it to try to imagine things that probably will not happen, but to find comfort in that just by thinking them or something so this is the so i feel the the um how to relate with this insecurity um and of course it's uh, it's of course as an artist you you're always insecure about financial stuff etc but it's but this one is different it's 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 an it's another um it's another silence and it's another insecurity. Um, and I feel myself dealing with that uh, from the moment I get up in the morning or not. Um, shall I go up or, well, I have this meeting and this meeting, well, yeah, but still, and then this meeting is about, well, maybe we do something. Um, and I feel myself dealing with that. Um, and there's, that's one thing, and and of course fear somehow much more fear than than um, fear for a future and fear for for for, uh, for 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 the unknown because we kind of knew we kind of knew that extreme right in Belgium was coming up etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, you could see it happening but now you can't see it can't it's unknown and this is uh this is something what i'm i'm trying to uh i feel myself trying to deal with it um uh, also what we just talked about to be to be comforted in in a waiting zone to be comfort to to feel comfort in a in a in a zone where you just wait so the this is this is chemically, uh, but I think it's not it's not me as narcissist. I think everybody is dealing with it, uh, as, at least the people who don't have to work, etc., or cannot work. Um, um, so this is. I, I remember these trees outside when they when the confinement where the lockdown confinement started. They didn't have leave yet leaves yet. And I kind of hoped that if they would have, that I wouldn't see them from confinement blooming, but now they are in full uh, and there's a second wave coming up uh, as everybody predicts. And so that means in my situation or in a theater situation that imagine that we have it, that in, in autumn there would be a second wave that would mean that we uh december january Gen may before something will that we can do things and i'm quite scared of that of that long long period of time um and and uh, 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 uh yeah and afraid for for all other artists who yeah, you'd see this kind of 
desperation on people's faces, yeah. Um, the future is so uncertain that it's, and I do understand that people from the outside world are, are, uh, are used to that, but we don't. So this is, I, I feel that being, yeah, and I feel myself trying to um, deal with it. Before we, we close down, what is, if you, for young artists, you know, if you would have to talk to young Christopher Donk, uh, who is studying architecture, and what, what do you think is of significance? What's to keep in mind and what, what should we do? How can we use the time best? I, I don't think I would say do not become an artist, although, although it would be a, a tempting thing to say, do something, go, run. Um, no, I, I, I think it's to be conscious. Try to be conscious about, about the tectonic plates. Try to understand them as try to feel or to read, to, 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 to look at the outside world. Try, try to understand what to be understood and then you, and then try to give it form no matter how. Uh, but I think first of all is to um, to to look outside, and then I think that would be the that's still the definition. You you look outside, you take it in, and you do something with it. Um, but the looking outside now is is even more complex. The taking it in is even more strange because you're you're learning yourself to adapt to a situation where you didn't choose to be in. Um, and then the next step to give form, and you don't know the medium because no, but, but you can't you can't invite people. So so it is a uh, in that sense it's it's there's more work uh, in, internal. There's more work than than ever to be done to to uh, to give form uh, to this because that finally. Fine. That is the job of an artist to try to give form about of, of, of an outside world. Um, and there's just more work now than ever. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's uh, important. Yeah, so, um, well, really, Chris, um, um, and thank you for that uh, snapshot, you know, out of you being in confinement in Brussels, uh, close to the Kai Theater and uh, I think your work has been always been significant, uh, your, your reflections, and uh, we'll, we'll see, as you say, where it all comes in, the, you know, the uh, reminder that we are all waiting and that, that perhaps is something Beckett talked about and Kafka talked about and the Inuit stories of the Sen. That you so this is something um, um, ancient. I like your, in a way, these kind of return to writing, to reading. I think Bonnie Marankam on PHA, Performing Arts Journal is also a, Things you know, this is a time perhaps you know where writing in this some way in the post-traumatic world where we live in, where it was one part of the many elements, but perhaps it shines a tiny bit brighter. Perhaps and again, you know, that we will looking looking at words and trying to find you know, the words, the language for the theater. So um, this is just a, 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 a real um, a real contribution, and I think you gave us comfort. Um, listening to you and your reflection and we are less alone and we know that forms of intelligence like yours are looking at the situation and come to terms with it but also live through it as as we all do and we you care about the world and us and we we do care about you so this is a a great um, great contribution really thank you and to our listeners also thank you for taking time out if you listen today on memorial day uh, monday a special day and um and I hope you got something out of it. It is important to have the audience. And this is what is all about, as Chris just said. It's not what's happening on stage. It is about people in there, people thinking, they're processing what comes out of it and having that glass of wine or tea or whatever, which you might not have to have do with yourself. But ultimately, this is about you, the listener, or in performance, it also the, the, the viewer. So um, I hope you will be able to join us this week. Uh, Anaina Tour from Sala Beckett, speaking about Beckett from Barcelona, uh, will talk to us uh, about the situation in Barcelona and things she as a director and writer um, is scrappling with. We will hear Anne Bogart, the great American director who 
also has a you know, career and work to look back on on decades and uh, to see how she is uh, uh, creates meaning um, out of this uh, um, situation. Um, we will have Connie. We will have an Australian uh, playwright, of Patricia Cornelius, who also has worked for a long time and, and, and is looking at theater as a form of, you know, being part of society, community, and to interject and talk through stories and interweaving um, reality into it uh, to, to help us to um, get out of our own VR headset, how we look at things. And, um, and um, then, um, Hoi Fai Wek from Hong Kong will tell us it will have a new importance since these uh, drastic measures that are suggested by China last week. Um, I will hear, look forward to hearing from him what that will mean to him, but also how, how um, the coronavirus is now uh, um, influencing the minds and lives, the daily choreography, the social choreography of, of our existence. So um, thank you for, for staying. And Chris, again, really, thank you for taking this so serious and for um, answering us. I think uh, something that I will carry with me and think about. So hope to see you one day again and here in New York at the Siegel Center or in Brussels, which is an epicenter of contemporary theater. For everybody who does not know, uh, it is really Belgium is a significant place in the mental landscape of theater, something to explore, and uh, which perhaps was a bit more occupied by the Berlin scene for a long time also, you know, but Belgium always has been, perhaps not, there's a little bit less light on it, but there's a significant uh, 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 contribution to the contemporary work. So Chris, thank you so much, and I hope you will have a good dinner, and to all our listeners, um, thank you, thanks to HowlRound, Thea, Vijay, Travis, and of course my Siegel team, Sanyang, and uh, and uh, Andy, so thank you and um, Chris. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye.